Hello audience. In this video we're going to start reassembling a Model T engine transmission assembly, particularly the one that came out of the truck. And this one isn't it. Now my initial plan was to use this as an opportunity to renew everything in the engine and the transmission, but then I discovered I don't really have time for that. I've got several other projects apart all over the place, so for the time being I'm just going to fix what we found wrong with it and just break clean everything and throw it back together. And maybe sometime in the future we'll take this apart all over again and we'll look at the engine, see what it needs, and properly fix whatever else needs to be done. Now if some of you were hoping for a more thorough video series on a Model T engine and transmission, well don't worry because sometime soon I'm going to have to take apart the engine that's in the touring car and fix a few problems on that and I'll have plenty of time and patience to explain everything on that. Another thing is this engine and transmission is kind of a piece together and has a lot of homemade remedies in it that led to a lot of confusion with the audience and myself. So as we put it back together I'm going to explain a lot more of what's going on here. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to work on is the flywheel. Now as you probably remember when we were driving it, the ring gear came off, and that was what led to this whole project. And as I've said before, they're not really held on with an interference fit. The screws that hold the magnets on also go through this, and that's what primarily holds it together. Now this is missing all the hardware that should be on it. Originally, it had 16 magnets, which attached to the side of it. And these did two things. They threw the oil around, which this pretty much is the oil pump for the engine. It's what circulates it. But more importantly, they powered the magneto. This was pretty much the electrical power source for the car. This bolts on the back of the block. The flywheel spins alongside of it. and This generates the primary low voltage, which powers the ignition system. And in some cars, it powered the lights and the horn as well. And on non-starter cars, it was the only power source on the entire car. Now the enthusiast side of me was leaning towards putting all this stuff back together and making it work properly, but I'm not going to do that for a few reasons. One, I don't have all the hardware for this to make it work. Two, all of this needs to be aligned. The flywheel needs to run perfectly straight. The height of the magnets needs to be aligned. The surface of the magnets compared to the field coil also needs to be aligned. That takes a lot of time and patience that I just don't have right now. The third problem, which is more of a consideration, is these coils of wire, they're not really held on very well. They just have an interference fit on them pretty much. And though it's very rare, sometimes these do come off while the engine's running. And if they do, the wire gets tangled up in the flywheel and it locks up the engine. And that did happen to me once while I was on a tour. And I had to remove the transmission cover on the side of the road, untangle it best I could, and then put it back together to get home. Now, when driving this, I'm going to feel a lot better inside if I know that at least that problem can't possibly happen. Now, removing the magnets from the flywheel is a pretty common thing to do because it's a really easy way to remove a lot of rotating weight, which makes the engine rev up and rev down a lot easier. The problem is, there's nothing circulating the oil anymore. So a remedy to that is they have an oil slinger kit, which pretty much is paddles that bolt on here, and it's got additional hardware to hold the ring gear on, which is what I bought and is what I'm going to use on this. Remove the magnets and ring gear from your flywheel. If you are going to reuse your old ring gear, mark its position on the flywheel. A standard ring gear is tapped with a very uncommon thread size, quarter 24. We are furnishing 6mm bolts to replace the original quarter 24 brass screws. 
We have found that the 6mm metric bolts will thread into the hole tapped for the standard ring gear and will work satisfactory. They will bind slightly as they will be tightened, making them more secure. That's right kids, we're going to reassemble this with metric hardware. I just want to let everyone know that this wasn't my idea, I am just following the instructions. The threads are pretty beat up, so I'm running a tap through them. And it's an M6 by 1 tap, which is the same thread size as the bolts. Okay, we have four slingers, and three of them bolted on pretty good. This one, the bolt hole doesn't quite line up. So I'm going to have to do something about that. The next problem is these bolts are sticking up a little too high. And according to the instructions, you're supposed to peen them over just like the originals, but this is too much. I would probably need an air hammer to peen that much over, and that's not really necessary. All we need to really do is just stake them a little bit with a chisel. The ones that go through the slingers, that's sticking up just about right, but these. I might have to do something with that. And now we'll start reassembling the drums. Now, as you may remember, the brake drum was a problem. As the lugs that the clutch discs ride on were worn out. And probably the right thing to do would have been to just buy a new drum, but just about everyone in the comments suggested welding it up and trying to fix it. So just out of curiosity I tried doing that and this is pretty much what I came up with. Now these are cast iron which usually isn't very easy to weld but these actually were. I just hit it with the MIG welder. The problem with that is the weld is a much harder material and it's harder than a file or a cutting bit or a hacksaw blade or anything like that. The only real way to machine it is to grind it. And this is a very small space. You can't really get much of a grinding stone in there. So I was using stuff like this to get in there. And it didn't really do that precision of a job, but I did leave it better than it was. So 
So now the discs fit in there with less backlash than they had before. Now I kind of wanted to save this because in spite of the problems here, the rest of it is actually in pretty good shape. The brake surface is really nice. It doesn't have any grooves in it. It's not cracked anywhere. Bushings are still good. The gear that goes under here was still pressed on. So I'm going to reuse it. I don't know, I might buy a new one in the future. Maybe not. We'll see. Now that's pretty much where the problems end. Because here we have the low drum, which is also in pretty good shape. Doesn't really have anything wrong with it. The gear doesn't really have much wear to it. It's not cracked. It's working really good. The reverse drum is pretty much the same thing. It's in really good shape. As is the gear. Now, if you're not familiar with Model T transmissions, I have a few examples here of what original drums typically look like. This is a brake drum. It's a 2627, hence why it's wider than the other one. But if you look at the brake surface on it, it's worn really good. It's got a really good low spot here. And you can't really machine that out. There's just no material left on it. And here we have a low drum. Obviously it's got a piece missing out of it. But if you look closely at the gear, the teeth are worn down pretty good on it. There's some real low spots on it. And here's a reverse drum, which at a glance looks pretty good. If you look closely, it's cracked right across here and across here. So this likely would break apart eventually if used. So yeah, compared to the others, these are actually pretty good. Okay, when installing this gear, you really should use a press, but whether you press it on or hammer it on, there's something really important. You should support this from this surface, because when you're pressing it on the other side, this is where all the force goes to, and if you set it on this surface, 
then all that stress gets transferred around here. And like I said, this is all cast iron. So you might possibly crack this area. Now I was just using a big socket, which worked. It kept this surface off from touching the ground. When installing the triple gears, remember, each of them has a timing mark, and the marks need to be nine teeth apart from each other. You might also notice, these are two different types of gears. Two of them are three-piece that have been riveted together, and one is a one-piece. I'm really trying to not let that bother me. Now it's time to bolt the pressure plate assembly on. Now before, it was held on with regular bolts and lock washers, and granted it was working that way, but originally the bolts were safety wired together. So I bought a set of new bolts that are drilled for wire, and that's the way I'm going to assemble it. Now this still has the spring on it, so like any other clutch assembly, we have to put all the bolts on and draw them down evenly.
next part to work on is the oil pan or the crankcase, whatever you want to call it. Now this one has a few small problems. The bottom of it, that's been smashed in a little bit, but it's not really hurting anything. I'm probably going to leave it. Some of the bolts have been pushed out from improper assembly, which I think I'm going to fix. And that's about it. Otherwise, this is in pretty good condition. It's not bent or cracked. The engine mounts aren't ripped out of it. These can usually be pretty darn rough, especially when you're trying to get them for free. And to make things even better, somebody actually went through the trouble of cleaning this up thoroughly, inside and out, and painted it with good quality paint. Why they chose to paint it blue, I have no idea. So the plan is, I'm probably going to fix a few of these flaws on it, replace some of the hardware, maybe spray can it, and put it back together. Now one of the oil petcocks is missing, and has been replaced with a grease fitting. Why they did that, I'm not sure. But I bought a pair of modern replacement ones. The oil drain plug is pretty beat up and almost completely round. It was pretty tough taking it off last time, so I bought a new one. Ring gear beat it up a little bit, but not too bad. The crankshaft seal was originally just felt. Somebody added a rope seal on it, like what a Model A has, and the timing cover has the same thing. It's been working, so I'm just going to leave it. This is the worst of the damage. As you can see, this area is raised up around here, but that should be pretty easy to fix. Well, that's it for now. now. The next step is I need to touch up a few things on the engine, then I can bolt all this stuff together. And by the time you're watching this, that'll probably already have been done, so hopefully the next video isn't going to take too long to finish. So anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.